Hello, welcome to episode 113 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 23rd of April. So welcome everybody. Mm. Hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last seven days. So today we have some knitting, quite a few different sewing projects and they're different sort of crafts so I'll show you that later. We have some confessions. <laughs> A blast from the past and some information on my shop update which is tomorrow Friday the 24th of April at 7 p.m. GMT so you can find me on Instagram Ravelry and Facebook as Craft House Magic and I have my own website crafthousemagic.co.uk where you can find my handmade project bags stitch markers um, hand dyed yarn higher higher knitting needles and also fabrics as well I have a couple of make-alongs going on in the Ravelry group at the moment. So we have the What A Lot Of Potter Cal, which I'm doing in collaboration with the lovely Becky from the Back To Blighty podcast. And we're basically knitting things out of the Harry Potter Knitting Magic book, which I've shown you in quite a few weeks in a row, so I won't show it again. Um, but I will leave links down below to that if you want to find it. Um, I've got the discussion thread over in my Ravelry group and um, Becky's got the finished object thread over in hers so do come and join us. Lots of lovely ideas of making and adapting patterns over there. We also have the spring shawl along going on at the moment in the Ravelry group um, and it's basically it can be knitting or crochet um, and it can be any shawl or to be honest scarves count as well. To me they're close enough shawls. <laughs> Um, so do come and join us. It's a discussion thread and I'm going to be drawing prizes straight from there so there's no um, requirement to actually finish anything but it's just all about having a go and having fun really. So let's get into the good stuff. We have some knitting first. I have finished my pure joy shawl. I am amazed of how much <laughs> I've been knitting on this. So this is a lovely pattern by lovely Hohi Locatelli and i started it possibly less than two weeks ago <laughs> and i have a finished object it is not blocked yet so it doesn't look all um neat as yet but you can see that the, it's a crescent shaped shawl um because it's sort of started off here i find that crescent shape and circular shawls always or half circle shawls always have this sort of bumpy bit so once that's blocked that'll disappear but I do love this shape because you get a nice long shawl that you can wrap around your neck a few times. Um, I did find that because I've knitted this in two colours because that's what the pattern says that this um, colour here I ended up actually going over one skein so I ended up using a, between 5 and 10 grams of another skein that I'd got of this colourway. Um, so this is Tell It To My Heart, one of my own hand dyed yarns and I've used all my merino nylon base which is 75% merino and 25% nylon and the length of the skein is about 425 metres so it's about an average length of a skein so I suggest that you make sure you have at least another 20 grams of the yarn that you're going to use for this bit of the shawl if you are going to knit this. Um, I have heard people say that before but I am quite a tight knitter so I didn't expect to run out. Um, and then my second colourway I'm using here is Love Shack and I think that they go together really nicely. There's some of um, the, the pink from Love Shack in the tell it to my heart colourway which I think goes really nicely um, and you can see where there's eyelet rows there's little bits of the tell it to my heart colourway as well I'll get a bit closer so you can see there we go really enjoyed knitting on this I could basically couldn't put it down <laughs> And it's quite a long shawl, so I shall show you how I'd wear it. It will look much better though when it's been blocked. I will try and block it for next week so that I can show you. Um, but it's nice and long here so it doesn't come flinging off your shoulders. Um, and it's just the right depth really, so it's sometimes um, a bit warm to be wearing something that's very deep. So it's quite a nice narrow one. It's perfect really. So that's my first... Thing to show you and I have another finished object which is basically a bit of a cheat 
<laughs> so last week I showed you that my lovely mother-in-law Liz had knitted this shawl for me and I'd actually um, I've blocked it since so it's got a lovely drape to it now but I've um, also added some giant pom-poms <laughs> so in the the actual pattern so the pattern is the right around the corner shawl by Lisa Haynes and in the pattern she tells you to do so many wraps um, to make the tassels but I've basically done quite a few more wraps <laughs> and she suggests using a CD case to make your tassels um, which I did this time because the, I've done this shawl when I knitted it myself and I ended up making really tiny tassels but this time I thought I'm gonna make some huge tassels <laughs> So I wrapped it around a CD case and I ended up doing 125 wraps, which is quite substantially more than it said in the instructions. But I do love this. I think that the large tassels balance nicely with how um, the shawl points in the centre, if that makes sense. So I really love this. It's going to be something I wear a lot, even though my mother-in-law Liz knitted it for me. <laughs> she was very bored during lockdown, so I gave her some of my new yarn to work with. So I absolutely love this. And I think because it's got the navy in it, um, which is because the night, um, I think that'll go with a lot of my clothes. This colourway here is running up that hill and I again used the, my 75% merino, 25% nylon base um, to make this and again I should say that I did not knit the main body of the shawl I've just blocked it and added the tassels but it's all finished and ready to wear now and I absolutely love this and I am actually tempted to get my other right around the corner shawl and remove the tassels and make massive ones like these because <laughs> they are fantastic so I've just done a quick um, change and I've got my other right around the corner shawl um, that I knitted a little while ago and it's in a sparkly base. I'm not quite sure whether you can see that on camera. Um, but I, you can tell that these tassels are really tiny and I thought that this time I'd go for larger ones and look at the difference between those tassels. <laughs> So these ones are smaller than the pattern suggested and these are, are quite a bit larger so I had to go for the extremes there with the new version. So this one, um, I basically followed the pattern exactly the same. Um, this colourway is my own hand dyed in the um, Here Comes the Rain Again colourway and this is You Can't Hurry Love but like I said that's on the Stellina base. So there's my two right around the corner shawls. Um, and I'm very tempted to actually have another one of these either to knit it myself or to give it to Liz to <laughs> knit for me because she's um, finding it difficult to sort of distract herself during the um, the lockdown that we're on so that would be something cool so I've got a couple more shawls to wear once I've blocked um, the Pure Joy shawl as well so that's all the knitting I've got to show you but I've got quite a bit of sewing so I'm going to start with the cross stitch bit so this I promised a couple of weeks ago that I would do a little bit every week and this is the actual um, picture of what it's going to look like when it's finished hopefully and it's um, a cross stitch kit that I picked up from a charity shop that's a, sort of a vintage one it actually says it's printed in 1989 I think somewhere I can't see where I saw it now but it does say 1989 on the cross stitch in the corner so I will be changing that to 2020 um, so it's a bit of a memory well that's if I finish it this year that's if I get to that bit by this year <laughs> hopefully so this is how I've got on I feel like I've done quite a bit this this last seven days or so so I've actually done the writing all the way across the top and then I finished the writing um, just at the bottom here um, so all the writing bits done and I've also done a little pot which has got a little bush there and a little bird which is a bit weird because it is in rather strange colours but I think as a whole it's going to look nice but you can see how I've got this section here now to finish in, in order to go onto the borders around the edge but there are two borders so it's going to take me a little while there's like um, a foliage border as you can see around there and then there's some letters and numbers right around the edge so I'm gonna hopefully get a real 
good chunk of that done by next week as well but I am really enjoying it it just seems to take forever <laughs> quite a few hours work last in the last seven days I think but I do like the way these little trees look at in the side um, and there's another one that's got to go here as well so hopefully that'll come together quite soon so that's my cross stitch that I've been working on and I've also done a bit on my Nikki Franklin embroidery. So I had a lovely kit, which is for this beautiful hand embroidered tree. And it came with all the materials. So I just could get started to it straight away. Although I've had it for like a year, which is a bit silly, really. <laughs> I'm getting into the mode of stitching at the moment by hand stitching. So that's how I've got on so far. I've done all of the sort of bark and I've done quite a few of the French knots um, on the tree but obviously there's quite a lot more because it's got to be all the way around here is basically just solid French knots. Um, and the needle minder I'm using, if you watched last week's podcast, it's from Chapel View Crafts and it's got some gorgeous um, loaves of bread on there with a really high detail which is absolutely lovely. So there we go, I'm really enjoying that actually. With the slightly longer evenings so that there's more light I can get um, a few French knots done each evening so hopefully that'll be finished I reckon I can finish that by the end of May that's not too far away <laughs> so that's my sort of embroidery so I've been watching lovely Davina from the Little Workroom Crafts podcast and she's been doing lots of English paper piecing and she'd recently done a little video tutorial on how she does hers. Um, so it just reinvigorated um, my enthusiasm for doing some English paper piecing. <laughs> so I have done um, a couple of sort of lap size quilts um, with doing English paper piecing but after those I got really fed up with it. <laughs> And hadn't picked it up for ages and then I think was it last year I did or maybe the year before I did a little um, a day course on doing English paper piecing uh, and I started a La Passacaglia motif and I just got a bit fed up of it I think partly because I wasn't really enjoying the fabrics I was using for it I was just sort of using some little scraps just to get into it again and then I just lost interest and then Davina reinvigorated uh, my enthusiasm for it all and I picked up some little mini hexagons to put together and I actually think that I enjoy doing the smaller ones better than the larger ones um, which sounds ridiculous really <laughs> but I just love little tiny things this needs a good press really but um, that's how I've got on so far so I've joined up a little floret of tiny little hexagons and this is going to be a little needle case um, and there's going to be some pages in there to put some needles in. This is a pattern by Emma Jones who's the vintage sewing box .co .uk, and she's got some really lovely other little patterns that I'd like to try as well but I thought that I'd use this for my sewing machine needles because I have different types of needles that I use for my sewing machine and I basically have just got a scrappy little bit of material <laughs> with the needles in so I know which ones they are but I'm going to have different pages for sort of universal or top stitch or microtex needles um, etc so that I can have somewhere nice <laughs> to store my sewing machine needles in so I have done the front panel so there we are I've got my seven little hexagons that I've appliqued on the front cover and I've used um, a fussy cut little bit of fabric to do the center hexagon and all these fabrics are Lynette Anderson fabrics that I picked up um, a few years ago at the either the knitting and stitching show or the um, festival of quilts I think um, so then I've bound it the front um, with this lovely uh, material with little dragonflies on so that's the front and then I've also made um, a back piece which I think I'm going to applique something else onto there but it has got a, a pretty little fabric on the back as well so inside there um, I'm going to be stitching some felt pages so that I can tell the difference between uh, my needles rather than having them stuck in a scrappy bit of fabric. <laughs> So I really enjoyed doing those and I'm actually going to be doing um, 
quite a bit more English paper piece than I think but I'll stick to the little bits because rather than doing a massive quilt or something which I'll end up getting fed up of um, that's just a nice little pleasurable thing to get on with I've also been very busy sorting out sort of storage things for my craft room and I've actually been making these little pods there that are behind me. I'll just go and grab one. So these pods uh, I wanted to, to store my zips in and I've had this pattern in my stash a little while and it's um, from Love From Beth who has got a number of other lovely patterns as well and I've made one of the, her other little bubble pods um, which I shall show you in my blast from the past in a little bit um, but I wanted to make these larger pods to put the zips in so I thought that'd be really handy so I've got some blue white and then some black zips here the ones I use the most and they're just there really easy to access um, and they also look quite cute as well um, so they were quite difficult quite fiddly to make especially adding the base in at the bottom um, but once I'd sort of done two <laughs> I think the third one was a bit easier there is quite a bit of hand sewing so you stitch most of it on the machine but then you go round and and sort of hand sew the binding on afterwards I suppose you could machine stitch the binding um, but I think after I'd spent so long sort of doing lots of quilting on the fabrics as well um, I wanted it to be as neat as possible so they've got a little hook at the top there um, and I've just got them hooked on my little um, these poles and S hooks are from Ikea. Um, I think they're basically in the kitchen range, but they're brilliant for craft rooms. And I used to hang my yarn there, which I thought, well, that's not very good use of space when I actually need things to store things on. So I think they'll be brilliant to have my zips there. So, so far, I'm really pleased with the placement of it and everything. So, and I'd actually probably make some more of these, but if you aren't quite new to sewing, it's probably a bit of a frustrating project because of that, um, um, getting the base in there but um, I think one tip I have is that before you insert this bottom panel is to tack stitch the three layers together before you put it on and then you don't end up with holes occurring basically but these pods are from Love From Beth and I really like those um, and I think that they sort of add to my room they're something that I've made and they're also handy storage <laughs> So after I've showed you those, I thought I'd actually do my blast from the past straight after um, so that you can see the other pattern that she's got. So this is the bubble pod um, and those ones I've just showed you are just called storage pods. Um, this is the bubble pod pattern and it's much smaller and sort of daintier and I've been using this to catch my threads in um, next to my sewing machine because it's always useful to have somewhere um, to pop your threads in when you've um, got little bits that you've cut off your work um, I just think that's really cute and I love the colour of this material that I've used I used some batik material this one when I quilted it I did um, grey thread and did some wiggly lines instead of the straight lines um, it is a little bit fiddly putting the base in, um, similar to the other pattern I showed you, but with a little bit of patience, um, it's not too bad. But aren't they cute? Love it. I'm definitely going to make some more of these, I think, for other areas um, in the craft room to use as storage. Um, I will leave links to Love From Beth website in the down bar if you're interested in finding the patterns for these. She's often at um, events like the Festival of Quilts, so that's where I've seen her to get the patterns before. So I have some confessions next, although they're not proper confessions to be honest. I had a most beautiful parcel sent to me by my lovely friend Julianne um, and she messaged me and said would you like to try some yarn from Germany and I said oh that would be lovely and expecting her to send me one skein she sent me six. <laughs> That is so amazing. Thank you so much, Julianne. And I cannot wait to cast these on. They're all really beautiful. You must have very similar tasting colours to me. And a beautiful card came with this as well. And it's one of the Katie Green um, cards that she's drawn. These beautiful um, socks that this fox is wearing. How cute is that? How lovely. Um, I'll have to pop to Katie Green's shop to see if I can pick myself up some of these note cards. Aren't they lovely? 
so she sent me a lovely message in there um, and explaining um, where I could get some of the wools from so I will link um, to where the yarns are from in the down bar as well so you can find out those so first of all I thought this one was really interesting it's called Flot Sock um, and it's by a company called Rolana Garn I think um, and it's called um, it's, I think it's called Bambus Merino Emotion and it's basically a really cool mix between 50% merino um, wool, 25% viscose wool and 25% polyamide. Um, so these are, this feels really soft. So I'll be really interested to see how that comes out in a pair of socks. And I love how the colours grade from one to another here as well. So, so I'm excited to see how that knits up. Thank you so much. And then we have loads more. So um, so there's another manufacturer which is called Boutinette. Um, and it's, I, it says the web address is boutinette.com. I will leave links in the down bar as well. And they're called Woolbutt. There's, I think that these four are from the same company and it looks like they've all got different names for different places in Germany so this is called Feldberg which Julianne has put a lovely little note on explaining that Feldberg is the tallest hill in Germany outside of the Alps and there's a really lovely green and red um, striping going on there so that's really lovely um, and that's going to make a lovely pair of socks. I think that's very slightly Christmassy as well. Because red and green to me is always Christmassy. I have a Saar Louise. And it's a town. I've probably butchered that terribly. But it's a town in Germany near the French border. And I think that's gorgeous. I love these turquoises and blues. Absolutely beautiful. Can't ever get enough turquoise if you ask me <laughs> and there's a really cute self-striping one here that's got some really lovely combination of blue green pink and purple there which I absolutely love those are going to be gorgeous so that's in the same um, yarn as well I'm pretty sure they're all 75 25 wool and polyamide the ones I've just showed you um, and then there's another one which is the same make but it's got the addition of some sparkle it's from Christmas yarn and it's called Town and Bow isn't that cool and it's a very sparkly Christmas sock yarn which I haven't actually seen sparkly Christmas sock yarn before so that is going to be a treat and it's got 73% um, wool, 24% polyamide and 3% polyester because obviously that's the, the golden sparkle in there so that's going to be gorgeous. Um, thank you so much and again there's another one so this is a different make this time and this is called Ferner Wool um, and this is from Austria. Isn't that gorgeous? I have never seen Christmas yarn looking this pretty. That is amazing. Um, so I think this one was 25% superwash wool, 25% um, polyamide, but I think that the it's got 450 metres on it, which I think is quite a long, but it doesn't seem any finer. It seems lovely and squishy, um, and that is going to be lovely to knit up a into a pair of Christmas socks. This is um, definitely my favourite Christmas sock yarn for 2020 I think. So those are really gorgeous. Thank you so much Julianne. I'm really appreciative of the beautiful parcel. It was in quarantine in our conservatory for three days so I was dying to open it. So I opened it this morning and it was a beautiful surprise. Thank you. Uh, so that's all my confessions that I've got to show you but I do have some information on my shop update. So my shop update is the 24th of April at 7pm and I have some new bags to show you. So I have some new style fabric bags which is this beautiful corally colour with some little bits of green foliage in there. I absolutely love this. Um, and inside the flowers there's some delicate little purple detail as well which I absolutely love. So this is the drawstring version, medium sized one. 
with a box bottom um, and I do do a smaller and a larger version as well but I'm just going to show you the medium for today um, you can see that there's two nice big pockets there. I've just got my Christmas yarn in to show you <laughs> what it's like when it's full um, and that's a drawstring but there will be um, ones the option to have zips as well so it'll be exactly the same just with the zip along the top there um, I will be offering all the little accessories I've got the DPN cases circular needle cases and I have a video on how to um, use these and I'll pop that a link up there if you need to see that um, I have some cute little scissor cases with the option to purchase the scissors that go with it and I have my little notions pouches as well um, which you can see there and I've accompanied that with a little um, flower progress keeper but I just love this fabric it's one of my favorites I think so um, and of course if you if you purchase one of the bags you get a little um, lavender sachet with it as well so I also picked up some of these um, wildflowers encased in some resin and I'm offering those as progress keepers so you can choose whether to have um, a small or large lobster clasp or the lever back clasp as well but I think that they're really gorgeous and go really well um, with this material so those will all be in the shop on Friday. I think that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. And I shall see you in the next episode. Bye!